Now, the stopping distance is a total distance it takes from maybe seeing uh, an obstacle or an incident uh, from maybe when you see that until you actually come to a complete halt. So that is the total distance that it takes. But this is made up of two different factors. We've got your thinking distance, which is how long it takes you to react to whatever you see around you. And then there's also the braking distance. And the braking distance is how far it takes for the car to come to a halt after you've actually applied the brakes. Now, there are certain factors that affect both of these. So first of all, let's think about the thinking distance. Now, this is affected by two things, your reaction time, which is how quickly you respond to something, and also how fast you're going. So the reaction time, this can actually be affected by certain things. If you're particularly tired, it's gonna maybe make you react a little bit uh, slower. If you're distracted, like I am at the moment when I'm actually talking to the camera as well as driving, you know, my thinking time is gonna be increased. Two other things that we can actually do something about though are drinking and also drugs. Now, if you're drinking alcoholic drinks, the alcohol in the drinks actually affects um, how quickly you can react to things, which is why people maybe start to slur their speech when they've had a few too many drinks. But also the drugs, it's not just the legal drugs we're talking about. So we're not talking about things like ecstasy and cannabis. We can also think of the kind of everyday drugs that you might have for example, antihistamines, uh, maybe some sleep medication, maybe things that maybe it says on the side of the packet may cause drowsiness. So it's not just the illegal drugs we're talking about, uh, m medical drugs as well, they can also affect the time it takes for you to react. I said as well, it really affects uh, the speed that you're going at, because if you're going at twice the speed, and you've got the same thinking time, you're gonna travel twice that distance. And so what we're often in actually thinking about when it comes to um, our thinking distance is the distance that that car's traveled while you're reacting to whatever you see around you. The other thing I said was about the braking distance. Now the braking distance, um, it doesn't actually matter how drunk you are, once you put your foot on the brake, that car's gonna to come to a stop. But there are certain factors that affect how far it takes that car to come to a complete stop. So this is from when you put your foot on the brake, um, if the conditions of the road are maybe icy or wet, that's gonna affect, because then you've got less friction between the tire and the ground. So adverse road conditions are gonna increase that distance. Also, the conditions of the car's brakes and the wheels are gonna affect it as well. So if you've got badly maintained brakes, if there's not much brake pad left, or equally, if the tires are underinflated, they're overinflated, or the tires are worn down, these things are also gonna affect the total braking distance. And it's basically the combination of your thinking distance and your braking distance added together that give your overall stopping distance.